Hey everybody, <clears throat> I'm Dean Gunderson here with Seed St. Louis. Um, and today we are in what used to be our demo garden uh, where we rented a couple beds this year to continue to do variety trials. Um, so there's always plants that we wish we had better varieties for or plants that don't grow so well or just a plant that we recently heard about uh, that we wanna try out to see how well it does here in St. Louis so that we can either recommend it or tell you not to do it. Um, and so we're going to talk about a few of the things that we are trying uh, this summer today. Um, and we'll talk about a few more in the coming weeks. We have some tractors to drive by. <laughs> so uh, the first thing we're going to talk about are these tomatoes. Um, so if you see these tomatoes here, you will, look, you will notice that they are way too close together and they don't look super, super healthy. Um, and we're gonna talk about why. So these are tomatoes that we found out about that are called ramelette tomatoes, um, is, is one term for them. Um, there's a couple other names, but they are traditional varieties from the Mediterranean. So they're particularly popular in uh, the Iberian Peninsula, in Italy, a um, couple areas in North Africa, and then I think Greece, there's a few varieties. So essentially what these are, are these are storage tomatoes. So I always like to remind people that, you know, a lot of times we think about storage as like canning, like canning is synonymous with storage, but like canning was developed by a guy who was trying to win a competition that Napoleon set up. Like canning is not actually that old of a technique. Um, so before 200 years ago, there was no canning. So if you wanted food in the winter, you had to store it some other way. And they also didn't have freezers. And so um, that usually meant drying or just having varieties that would hold a long time in some um, in some sort of storage capacity, whether that be a root cellar or just sitting out. <clears throat> and that's what ramelette tomatoes were developed for. So these were varieties that were in the Mediterranean um, that were designed so that you let them grow. And they weren't necessarily like main season ones. They weren't ones that you're picking necessarily now to like eat on your sandwiches. They were ones that you were growing to harvest in the fall and then you would put them in your basement or hang them up in big lines like ristas, um, you know, like the pepper ristas in the Southwest. Um, and they would just kind of hang out over the winter so that you had tomatoes in the winter. <clears throat> and these are all the different varieties that we could find um, of that class of tomatoes that had seed available in the United States. And so we planted them all here. And again, we planted them pretty close because one of our biggest concerns with growing them here um, was how well they would handle our humidity. So uh, again, these are from Mediterranean, so pretty dry climate, especially in the summer. And tomatoes have quite a few fungal diseases. And so we wanted to really pack them in here to make sure that they were gonna be stressed um, and that they weren't gonna dry off really nice. We didn't wanna give them perfect conditions because when we're trialing, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, actually we've got a few more over there. So like 10 varieties, um, we didn't necessarily want all of them to be in a perfect condition and not get any disease simply because they were in that perfect condition. So we packed them together to see which ones would get fungal diseases. Um, and hopefully we would then know for sure which ones are kind of the most resistant and would be the best in our humid climate. So we packed them in here and they are just now starting to ripen, which again is about what we expect because these are storage tomatoes, ones that you would harvest in the fall for storage in the winter. And you'll see there's a lot of variation <laughs> as you go through here. So the only one of these varieties that is not from the Mediterranean is this one on the end. So this is actually a traditional Southern variety in the US. Um, so you'll maybe notice as we look through, um, it's got bigger fruit. Americans like bigger fruit for some reason. Um, bigger fruit generally is harder to store, um, has a lot more water content and stuff like that. So the traditional European varieties all tend to be smaller tomatoes. But this one is um, a Southern American variety. It was also the first one to kind of start producing um, for whatever that's worth. But you'll see these other ones in here, you know, they've got, they're kind of more, they, you know, they've got some, they've got some variety. So you got this one, you can see they're just starting to ripen and they've got kind of these little spots, striped kind of places. We have, you know, these that are a little bit on the bigger side. There's these little tiny ones um, that are more kind of, you know, like that orangey yellow color. And these are, are ripe here. 
Um, these actually, we had a ripe one over uh, the weekend and I ate it. But uh, this is about the size they get and they get just a really deep red. Um, we got, you know, these. But again, we're also trying to see how well they do. So we got this one and you can see, not, not so great. Um, but we'll see if that's just a fluke or if other ones um, are also that way. This one just popped off, so I guess that's ready. <clears throat> And then the ones down here were definitely the first ones to produce. So we got these, so these orange ones are, are ripe. Um, and there's a bunch more of them as we kind of come around the edge, we can see. And then this beautiful one here was, was the first one and it's just loaded with these nice dark red tomatoes. Um, you can see some of them got some rot on them. Um, but you know, nice, nice size. So these storage tomatoes for the most part are, uh, they have a, a thicker skin they're a little drier and they're a little bit more acidic. Um, so they're not necessarily as good as like the fresh from the garden summer tomatoes because they're, they're bred to store. And so there's those kind of factors that allow them to store. But I've actually been really surprised at how good most of them have been. This one in particular is really good. That one that I, that I ate, the one ripe one over the weekend was also really good. Um, but this, the skin being tough um, was unique and that when you bite into it, because you gotta like bite through the skin, it kind of explodes. Um, so you gotta, you gotta be careful. So I like to cut them <laughs> and then eat them. So what, we're, so what we're doing with these then is we're, you know, we're seeing how well they grow. We're seeing how well the tomatoes form. Um, you know, if they're, if they're all cracking and rotting, then it's probably not gonna be a great one. Um, but if we have one that is producing nice ones, we are then going to harvest those and we're gonna bring them inside, um, probably just to our office. Um, over the winter and see kind of how long they store. Um, you know, if, if they only store a couple weeks, that's not really much better than any other tomato. But if they store for several months, which is what happens in the Mediterranean climate at least, then that's probably one that we will want to do again. And we will tell you which ones that is. <clears throat> so then if we swing over here, so these are a few more of the storage tomatoes. This one in the back in particular um, is, oops, is a storage tomato that does not taste good fresh. It's pretty tasteless fresh. Um, it has the nice consistency. Um, we'll see after storage if it sweetens up or anything like that, but it has grown really well. I mean, you can see it's, it's got lots of healthy foliage on the top. You know, there's some dead stuff at the bottom, but it's September. So that one's been pretty happy. So what most of this bed is, and I don't know if we want to swing around, it might be easier over here, is our sweet pepper trial. So sweet peppers are another thing that we have um, that we have struggled growing uh, consistently well, at least ourselves. Maybe some, you know, somebody else out there is great. So one of the reasons is that I mean a lot of they want a fair amount of fertilizer, which we don't usually do. We do compost, um, but we don't usually do lots and lots of fertilizer. So what we wanted to do was we got a hold of a lot of different sweet peppers that uh, that we thought would do well based on descriptions, um, and we planted them all out here and we just need to see how they did. Um, and today is actually gonna be a really good example of why we don't release names um, midway through the season, because you never know what the rest of the season is gonna bring. But you can see there's a lot of variety here. So this is one, this variety is one that early on we were really excited about, because um, it was producing nice, like really big peppers. The foliage was really healthy, but then it just kind of stopped growing. This is about the size. And because there wasn't that much foliage, this is what all of the fruit have done. Uh, they just have gotten a lot of sun scald, burned. I don't think we've gotten a single good pepper from it because it just, it, it keeps getting burned. Um, this one is Ozark Giant, which is another one that we were really excited about because it was producing like big bell peppers, um, but it had kind of the same, same problem. Um, started rotting, a lot of them got sun scald, um, and it just has not been super productive, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, and then we get ones like this that are producing not the big bell peppers, but, uh, you know, kind of nice medium sized peppers and have done, have done pretty well. And you can see, you know, this nice, healthy, happy one here, um, has been cranking out peppers, uh, kind of relatively consistency, consistently the whole time. Here's the right one. They're mostly right. Um, and they're, you know, they're nice, thick, sweet. And then there's ones like this. So this is another one that, uh, you know, has been very interesting. It was the first one to produce uh, fruit, but we have kind of stopped harvesting them, as you can see these kind of shriveled ones. 
because they're so small that it's basically just 100% seeds. Um, processing them to actually get any of the actual bell pepper flesh is really annoying. So we, so we just don't even really harvest that one, um, or haven't been. There's some other ones over here that was another one that we thought early on we really liked, these kind of long, skinny ones um, that did well. But as the season has gone on, since we also wanted to see how um, structurally sound these plants are, like how much support they needed, how well they did, uh, this one is just kind of, it's just like growing on the ground. Um, so just kind of sprawling along. So we've had a lot of rot issues with the fruit and it just, again, has not been super productive. As we move further down, this is, um, <clears throat> these are a few that, again, even just like a couple weeks ago, I would have been like, these are it. These are the best ones. Um, they've been producing pretty large, nice peppers, similar to the one down there. They were the, the, um, the tallest plants, the fastest growing plants, but then just in the last couple weeks, they've started having issues where they're just, they're just wilting. Um, they've all been watered the same and everything else. Uh, we have an issue. So we'll see what happens the rest of the season so we can let you all know. But actually the pepper that has done the best for us is one that ended up somehow over in this bed. Um, so this one is um, Korbachi. So this is a Turkish uh, variety that has just consistently just produced so much fruit. Um, it was the first one to produce and whereas all the other peppers and it's been kind of my experience for the most part with most kind of sweet bell peppers, you kind of get them in waves. You'll get a whole bunch and then you don't get any for a week or two and then you get a whole bunch and then you don't get any for a week or two. These have just consistently produced and you can see that on this branch that just, you know, you start up here, you got these little green ones and just as you go down, they're, they're ripe. It just, they have kept growing. They keep flowering. They keep pumping out uh, new fruit and they're just, there has not been a break. Every time I'm here, there are at least a few ripe peppers to pick. Um, and the other thing that I have really liked about these um, is that the, the green ones are also very good. Like the, and the orange ones are very good. Uh, so some, some green peppers of varieties, not all that great, but the ripe ones really good. Um, this has been pretty good at kind of all, all stages. The only kind of downside uh, to this one so far, and you know, something could change. Um, for some people, although I don't really care, is that the seeds do go all the way down. So if you're wanting like a nice clean, like pepper flesh and you don't want seeds at all, that's kind of a problem. But uh, the seeds, it's not like, they're not hugely seedy. Let's see if I can find a cup of them in here. <clears throat> they're not, um, hugely seedy, and so they are not that bad to just eat. <laughs> I mean, I just eat them. Get them up in here. So you can see, you know, there's seeds kind of all along it, but it's just, you know, a little bit here and there. It's not like you're like, your mouth is full of seeds or anything. So, um, and they're good. So this is so far, been probably the cons consistently the best one. And again, this is Korbachi. This one over here is a hot pepper. It's kind of an anomaly. But yeah, those are the variety trials we're talking about today. Um, we will update everybody on how, how they, they turn out. Um, so when we know at the end of the season when it comes, we'll do kind of our final evaluation and we'll do a blog post. We might also do a video um, kind of depending on if there's enough visual things to see with them at that point. Uh, and then going forward, either next week or the week after, we will do a video on our other variety trial that we did this summer, which is eggplants, which is going really well. We got a lot of different eggplants over there, so stay tuned.